In this video, we're going to look at solving linear equations in one variable. So the goal here when we're solving linear equations in one variable is we want to get that variable isolated on one side of the equation and then have the numbers and whatever else, well, pretty much just numbers, on the other side of the equation. To do this, we do apply inverse operations uh, so that we can rewrite it so that our final answer should just say y equals something. To undo uh, what's going on here, so we have negative 10 being uh, added to it and then minus 5y. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do, it's like the reverse of order of operations. All these things happen to y and now we have to undo them. So it's kind of like if you're going skiing, you would put on long johns, you would put on a sweater, you would put on a coat, you would put on a scarf. When you come back from skiing, we're going to do the reverse of that. You're going to take off the scarf, you're going to take off the coat, you're going to take off the sweater. You might leave the long johns on, I don't know. But if, if you're going to get in the shower, you might want to take those off too. So we build it up and then we undo it. And that's what we're doing here is we're undoing these equations. So first, I have a negative 10 on this side. To undo the negative 10, I will add 10 to both sides. Negative 5y, these cancel out, equals 2. Then to get y by itself, we'll divide both sides by negative 5. Dividing both sides by a negative is important because uh, sometimes we see the negative when we're so used to like adding 5. Um, we want to make sure it's the same sign because negative divided by negative will make this side positive, thereby getting y by itself. If you divide it by positive 5, then you would have negative y, which is mostly almost by itself, but that still isn't y by itself. So we want to make sure negative 5 is being multiplied. We undo it by dividing by negative 5. And then here we can just write negative 2 over 5. If you put it in the calculator, you might end up with negative 0.4. That's fine too. I generally keep fractions in my answers. Looking at the second equation, so over here we have a d on the left-hand side and we have a d on the right-hand side. So we want to get the variables together on one side. It's very common for students to want to move everything to the, the, the variables to the left-hand side, and that's totally fine. Um, what we could do is we could do two steps in one, where not only am I going to move the variable term to the left-hand side, but I might move the constant to the right-hand side. So I can subtract 6d from the right-hand side, subtract 6d from the left-hand side. I also might add 2 to both sides right now. If I don't add 2 now, I would do it in the next step. Then here, what happens here? 8d minus 6d is 2d. Negative 2 and positive 2, that makes plus 0 or minus 0, which won't change this. 6d minus 6d is 0, and then negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. From here, I want to get d by itself. It's being multiplied by 2, so to undo multiply by 2, I will divide by 2. Divide the left-hand side, divide the right-hand side. I want to simplify as much as I can here. It's exact. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. In this example, we are going to solve linear equations that involve fractions. Now for this first one, actually for both of them, there's only one fraction. So because the one fraction is just a part of one single, single term, um, it's up to you if you want to clear it out or not. Some people will see a fraction and immediately shut down and not want to do a question, and I really don't want to encourage that at all. Um, if that's you, then what I would suggest doing is canceling out the fraction as soon as you can. For this particular problem, you don't have to do that. You can save it till the end. Uh, but because we're talking about clearing out fractions first, that's what I'm going to do. So because we only have one denominator, that is the least common denominator. My goal here, I want to get every term to have a denominator of three. This one's good to go. Here, I need a denominator of three. It currently has a denominator of one. So I would need to multiply by three over three. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by three. Same thing with the 23. I'm going to put 23 over one, turn it into a fraction. Then I can multiply both numerator and denominator by three. What does this give me? This gives me negative five over three s plus nine over three equals 69 over three. Once they all have that same denominator, we can apply the multiplication property of equality. Multiply the left-hand side by 3. Multiply the right-hand side by 3. What that's going to do, multiplying by 3, it's going to cancel out each of these divisions of 3. We would distribute the 3 here, it would cancel. We would distribute the 3 here, it would cancel. We can multiply here, it cancels. So we're left with the numerators. Negative 5s plus 9 equals 69. At this point, I do want to caution about using the variable s. S's, if you're not careful, can morph them their way into being fives. 
in which case if you turn this into a five, you no longer have any variables in the problem, which kind of makes a tricky situation. So you just want to be really careful with certain variables that kind of look like numbers, that you're very clear in your difference between fives and s's in this case. Uh, okay, so now we're going to get s by itself. I'm going to take away nine from both sides. That's going to leave me with negative 5s equals 60. To get s by itself, it's being multiplied by negative 5, so I want to divide both sides by negative 5. Negative 5 and negative 5 cancel. We're left with s. 60 divided by negative 5 is negative 12. So our solution here, s equals negative 12. Over here, now while here it was kind of optional if you want to clear out the fraction, I do suggest clearing out the fraction here. Um, we don't really want to distribute because you will be stuck with a fraction in the problem. Uh, just like this question, there is only one um, denominator here, so we just want to turn every term into a, to have a denominator of two. Technically, with this multiplication, we don't have to worry about this. It already has a denominator of two. We can take this expression and rewrite it as negative 4m minus 3 over 2. And that goes into a little bit of arithmetic why we can do that. If they're being multiplied. We can put this over 1. So it already has a denominator of 2, so that one's set. Over here, uh, negative m would have a denominator of 1 since it currently doesn't have a denominator, nor is it being multiplied to anything with a denominator. This already has a denominator of 2. Here we're going to multiply by 2 over 2. And that would give me negative 4m minus 3 over 2 equals negative 2m over 2. From here, we can multiply both sides by 2. And that'll cancel out the denominators, so that cancels with that. We're left with negative 4m minus 3 equals negative 2m. This whole time I've been very careful about this negative sign and keeping the parentheses in the problem. This negative, when it's out in front, it belongs to either the numerator or the denominator. I don't want to have it in the denominator because then I wouldn't have a denominator of 2. I would have a denominator of negative 2, which would be problematic later on. I made sure to keep the parentheses here because if you assign it to the numerator, then the entire numerator gets negated. So whatever its sign is, it should actually, it will really be the opposite because you're taking the negative of it. So we want to be really, really careful. A very common mistake is if you don't put the parentheses here and you just put that negative up here, the 3 gets excluded and we don't want to exclude the 3. Okay, so we're going to distribute the negative sign. We get negative 4m plus 3 equals negative 2m. In this case, it is easier to actually move the variable to the right-hand side because it's isolated on the right-hand side. So while usually I move everything, the, the variables to the left, this time I'm actually going to move it to the right because it's just one fewer step. So I'm going to add 4m to both sides. Those cancel. We're left with 3 equals 2m. Because we have an equation and equality is commutative, if you want to switch it around, you can. It does not change the equality. So this says 3 equals 2m. If you want to write it as 2m equals 3, you're allowed to do that because it's commutative. OK, so if I do switch it around, that would be 2m equals 3. I need to get m by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And we have m equals 3 over 2. If you're my student, you can leave 3 over 2. I'm perfectly fine with that. Some professors do prefer that you either convert it to a mixed number, in which case it would be 1 and a half, or if you type it in the calculator, you get 1.5, and that's fine too.